Hey y'all, it's David Ducker coming back at you. And today, I'm telling an RPG horror story. <laughs> this horror story is called, it's great to see you, Dave. <laughs> this is not the fall of the GM. Mostly. It's the fall of the rule set. And perhaps, perhaps you could argue it's, it's the fault of some of the GM's decisions, but... I don't, I don't blame the GM at all. Uh, it was uh, Philip Adam Posey. I know some of you hate him. Some of you won't watch his channel, which is Maps and Dragons. Uh, he's a very uh, interesting individual. He's uh, very controversial, very polarizing. I've never had any problems with him uh, at all, in fact. I can see how people have problems with him. Uh, but a lot of people have problems with me. <laughs> and I'm hard to deal with. So I completely understand that. I'm hard to deal with in a different way, perhaps. But, you know, we misfits have to stick together. So I just, I just wanted to preface this by saying, I don't think it's Phil's fault. It's just the way the dice fell. <laughs> but it is kind of a horror story. Phil invites me to this game, My Farog. It's a Viking role-playing game. They call it, I think, the mythic fantasy role-playing game. I hate My Farog as a rule set. I think it's really clunky and antiquated. It feels like it's from the 80s. I don't like that. It, you know, combat takes forever. You're going to make, like, we're walking through the woods. I had to make stamina tests just to walk through the woods. And I'm like, what the heck? I don't like the rule set. The setting is fine. Vikings, great. They have Edens, which are Jotun, wandering around. The Norse gods, Iron Age, you got mail, armor, got a big spear, maybe a Viking sword, a round shield. It's great. I love the setting. No problem. Rule set, don't like. Phil, love Phil as a role player in the game. They like said, out of the game, I never had any problems with him. Some people have. I haven't. I'm just in the game. That's it. You know, I haven't talked to Phil a tremendous amount outside of role-playing. That's how I met him. It's through role-playing. So we just role-play. And in role-playing, I think he's great. I love role-playing with him. So he says, Dave, come in for my Farouk. I said, sure, Phil. No problem. Because I know he's good. I like the setting. I'll try to tolerate the rule set. So we get in. He describes uh, the, the opening. We're in a village. It's winter. It's snowy. You know, we all describe our characters. I believe there were like some missing children. And, you know, we get together and we're talking about, yeah, we're going to go save the missing children. Badass Vikings are going to wade through the snow and we're going to save the children. And I think my character was uh, like a scheming politician, I believe. So I was like, oh, yes, yes, we'll save the children. I have no fear. And, you know, I just wanted the prestige, and I didn't want any danger. So I was being a foil to the others. You know, I let them describe their characters first. They're like, oh, a big buff manly man. Oh, it's a giant beard and a huge axe. And they're all, like, jacked on testosterone. So I'm like, okay, my character is going to be short and skinny. And kind of cowardly and intellectual. I'm going to be the exact opposite. Just so I stand out. We have more entertainment value. I will be a foil. Our role playing will be interesting. <clears throat> so we do our role play in the village. It's great. We head out of the village. We're, we're making stamina tests and we're trekking. And, uh, you know, Phil did a, such a great job. I still remember it. And this was like six months or a year ago. And he's just describing the snow and the moonlight. And, we, and there's this canyon with a rickety rope bridge and mist rising up out of it. And it was like, it was so evocative and so, uh, uh, so interesting, you know. And uh, I was just like, oh, oh, this is my joint, <laughs> you know. And my character's like, I'm like scared of the dark because they're all like badass. And they're like, I'm not scared of anything. You know, so I'm like, oh, my character's scared then. <laughs> there could be anything lurking in the shadow, you know, and I'm like, so I'm, my character's freaking out. I'm loving the description, the ambiance. 
We're crossing the rope bridge. The wind is blowing us uh, on, on the bridge, is swaying. The mist is rising up. Oh my god, what, what lurks in the mist? How deep is this canyon? It could go straight down to hell, you know? And it was so much fun. And I'm like, this is going to be the joint. We're going into this dark forest. We can see this, uh, like, ruined castle up on a hill on the other side. And we're going through the the, the forest. And then we're starting to trek up or along the hill to get up to the castle. You know, and this is, you know, this is only taking like a half hour in, in game. Despite the stamina tests that we're making or whatever, stamina points. Um, and Phil is like, Dave, make a perception check. So I, I, I said, so I fail, Phil. I don't see a thing. He said, okay, Dave, what's your parry? And, and I, I like, you know, I'm like 10. And he's like, you take... 15 points of damage and I'm like well I'm dead and, and he's like well it was good to see you Dave and he like and then I'm just gone <laughs> I'm just like oh no I, I was like so excited to come into the uh game you know and in the first like half hour I'm just done because I was walking in the back because I'm scared they're up in the front we're going up this rock uh, path up towards the fortress and then phil we do the mechanics which you know my farog it, it, it didn't take that long but that's only because i died so fast and phil you know he describes this like mountain lion just comes screaming out of the darkness it lands on my back and like it, its paw just comes down and twists my head and then it like just bites into my jugular and just there's like one squirt of blood and I fall and there's a mountain lion sitting on my back that I'm dead just like that. And he get, he made everybody else make a perception test and he made the lion make a stealth test and they didn't even notice I was dead. <laughs> you know, I'm just gone and they just keep walking <laughs> and continue the adventure without me. All right. And, and, <laughs> This is a horror story because I set aside a four hours of my day and after a half hour, I'm just sorted right out. So for me, this was like so uh, disheartening because he was the intro was so good and I was like, oh, the mist. And I can still picture it. Oh, it's so good. And we're going up the mountain and this mountain lion just comes down on me and I'm just gone and nobody notices and I keep going. And it feels like, you know, well, it was good to see you, Dave. And then I just like hang hang up and I'm just gone. So that to me is an RPG horror story because it could have been great. And for the other guys, it probably was great because Phil is, is great. But for me, it was, it was so terrible. And, and I don't blame Phil because I, you know, that just happens. I do some. I do hold it against the rule set because the rule set is like so incredibly lethal, but it's it's so clunky and so lethal. It's like I really hate the rule set, but I don't think it's Phil's fault because in another uh, rule set, you know, even if I were defeated, I could have still been alive and they could have saved me or I could have said something. But in, in my furrow, it's just like, you're just dead and gone. And that's it. And unfortunately, there was no way for, for me, him to intro another character. He wasn't expecting me to die. But he, he put me in a tactical situation where it could happen. And then the rules really just did the rest. So not Phil's fault. I blame the rule set. Uh, I think, you know, if Phil had any fault in that, it was choosing that rule set. So for me, the moral of the story is choose your rule set very carefully, not only to avoid stamina tests, which are super tedious, just walking, but also to avoid instant player death of a player that you, you really want in the game. Because, uh, you know, he invited me, so he clearly wanted me. And I sure wanted to be there, but I couldn't because of the rule set. So that's my horror story. Uh, nice to see you, Dave. <laughs> that was it. We got to chill out for like a half hour and then I'm gone. Let me know in the comments below. Has this happened to you? Have you seen this happen to someone else? 
the instant death. For you know, in a live game, I'm gonna have to sit there for like three and a half hours watching everybody else play. Fortunately, it was online and I could just hang up and you know go do do my own thing after that. Uh, but, but that is the story for today. And until I see you again, good day and good game.